Today we're going to be tearing down the X Soldering Pro soldering station. Let's make a start on that now. Just gonna flip it over. And we need to take these off. There we go. That should give us access to the screws. And one thing is I want to do with this teardown is I'd quite like to replace that fan. So I'm going to see what type of fan it is, to see if I've got a replacement for it because it's a little bit noisy. For this we'll be using a big pointy, the biggest screwdriver that I own. And the screws are out. Let's have a look inside. Okay, got a few connectors on the board here, so let's take this off. And let's take those off. Right, so we have two very distinctive parts. The first part is this switch mode power supply. So what I've done is I've taken the power supply out of the soldering station, taken a couple of pictures of it, and then printed it out. On the right hand side we have the top layer and we have the bottom layer on the left. What I've also done is I've reversed uh, or mirrored the bottom layer so that the layout of the bottom matches the layout of the top. So there, for instance, you can see the little switch mode power supply chip or one of them that this uses and you can see its pins just on the bottom there. So the mains comes in here and the first part of this power supply is this circuit here. Now this is based upon a DK124 switch mode power supply controller and this can provide up to 24 watts output and can run straight off the main supply. So it doesn't need any clever trickery to get its supply voltage. You can just put main straight into it and that will kick it off and start it running. And all this circuit seems to do is provide an output to this socket here, which is marked 15 volts. So the plug that plugs into that socket goes straight onto the control board, which is just behind the screen. And that will be providing power for the ARM microprocessor in it, as well as the cooling fan. Now obviously the 15 volts doesn't go straight into the ARM processor. There's actually some uh, step down uh, switching circuitry on that board to uh, convert it to the voltages that the ARM processor needs to run at. The second part of this power supply is based on the TL494 and that's this chip here and that is a PWM power controller. Now this chip has been used for, I don't know, decades I would imagine. Uh, I've seen it in lots of PC power supplies before, albeit in the through-hole variant. And this chip is responsible for controlling these two N-channel MOSFETs up here, which drive this transformer here and provide the 24 volt output uh, into this diode up here. And this is a very, very chunky uh, dual diode. So what I think is going on is this is generating the 24 volts for the C245 part of this station which is uh, this part of the connector here and then we have another chip here the LM25116 and this is a synchronous buck controller and this is controlling these two MOSFETs here which are providing the 12 volt output that the C210 handle needs. It's quite a nice little power supply really it's based upon completely standard parts they haven't lasered any of them off repairing it would probably be quite easy if needs be. I really like the look of this power supply. I like the fact that it's got the matte solder mask as well, which when you order it from somewhere like PCBWay, is really expensive compared to the normal shiny stuff. The soldering seems excellent. Uh, it seems like a really nicely put together supply. I think the only thing I don't like quite as much is there's this capacitor, which is right next to this heatsink, which for some reason seems to have been bent around a little bit. Um, but yeah, that heatsink's 
probably going to get quite hot and uh, that means that cap's going to get quite hot as well. Now the caps on here do seem to be rated for 105 C but it would be nice you know to not have this concentrated heat source here um, heating up that capacitor. And look at these lovely chunky inductors here. That one there is for the 12 volt switching supply from here so you can see it here on that diagram and this one here I think is just part of the filter for the 24 volt output and that's about it for that circuit board let's have a look at the control board now okay let's see if we can get that out I've got to be careful when I'm cutting through this because I don't want to damage anything else on here. Immediately saw that lift a bit. Right, that would have helped if I'd have... Uh, Disconnected the screen first, but doesn't seem to be damaged, so I'm all right with that. Why is there spacing it? They've got a little bit of tape on the back of it and a little bit of tape down there. That's probably what's actually pushing it up a little bit. Oh, look at those nice big chunky buttons on there. Wow, they're really nice. I thought that they'd be little piddly things, but no, they're, they're pretty good. And now we can take that off there, put that to one side. Right, that's interesting how they've done the display then. It's literally just stuck onto this sticky side here. Like I say, the reason I think it's pushing out is because of these bits of tape on there. It's actually just pushing it up. It would probably be fine without those. The 15 volts from the power supply board comes into this header on here. And that then goes to the MP1584, which is a buck regulator. And that will convert the 15 volts into something the microprocessor can use, normally 5 or 3.3 volts. And over here we have a 4884N channel MOSFET, and that is used to control the fan which plugs in over here. This connector over here is where the metal parts of the stand plug into so that it can tell when the irons are back in their holders. Over here we have the ubiquitous LM358, and that is a dual op amp. And that will be the chip that they're using to deal with the measurements that come from the thermistors within the tips of the soldering irons. And we have a selection of MOSFETs over here. We have uh, 4407s there and there, and 4884s there. As I said before, the 4884s are N-channel MOSFETs and the 4407s are actually P-channel. And these will be used to switch the soldering iron heater on and off many, many times a second. Now it's interesting to note that the C210 connector only has two pins on it, whereas the T245 connector has three. Yeah, I've no idea why one's got two and one's got three. If anybody's got any ideas, uh, let me know. And I think the only other thing really worthy of note is this set of pads here, which I think are going to be a programming header for the microcontroller. And again, that looks like a really nice board. It seems well laid out. The soldering is, again, excellent. Only time will tell what this station is actually going to be like. But for the moment, I'm very happy with it. I don't regret spending the 150 quid or whatever it was that I spent on it. And I think if you're an enthusiastic amateur and you need a soldering station with two handles. Yeah, it seems great. Whilst I had the soldering station apart, I also took the time to glue uh, this bezel down properly. And now it doesn't make any horrible creaking noises and doesn't move. I imagine I'm not gonna be the only person with that particular problem uh, with this station. One other thing I also discovered was that the firmware can definitely be updated in this soldering station. You can go to the manufacturer's website and download a tool which will update it, which I have done. Now that I have that new firmware, it does seem to have reduced the amount of times I get that tip error coming up. In fact, since I updated it about four days ago, it's only occurred once. One thing it hasn't done though, is sorted out the discrepancy between what it reads for the tip temperature of the 210 
uh, to what the 210 tip temperature actually is. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please click like, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.